At T-Mobile, we're declaring the end of data limits. Introducing T-Mobile One. One price, all unlimited, for everyone. That's right. Get unlimited 4G LTE data on your smartphone, on our network that was built to handle it. And get it at a price that won't break the bank. With four lines of unlimited LTE data for just $35 a line per month with AutoPay. Switch today. Top 3% of data users greater than 26 gigabytes per month may see reduced speeds until next bill cycle. Video typically streams at 480p with qualifying credit discount via bill credit plus taxes and fees. Blog Talk Radio. Good morning and welcome to the Parenting Aces Radio Show on Blog Talk Radio's UR Tennis Network. I'm your host, Lisa Stone, and I know it's been a couple weeks, so I'm excited to be back with y'all today. Um... I've been doing a lot of traveling, and uh, it's just been a crazy few weeks, but settled in for <laughs> back in Atlanta for a couple weeks, and um, we have some great shows coming up over the next few weeks as well, so I'm excited to get into today's show. We'll be catching up with Harsh of Tenicity. Harsh has been traveling, I think, more than I have, and for some reason, he and I seem to be just missing each other <laughs> everywhere we go. So I still haven't had the opportunity to meet him live and in person, but we have been in constant communication since we were first put in contact uh, several months ago, and I'm really excited for Harsh to have the opportunity today to share with all of us an update on tenacity and his travels and meetings and um, what he's learning about junior coaching and development and using technology to assist with that. So I think we have a great show today. If you are listening and have questions or would like to call in and just chat with us, we always welcome that. The number to call in is 714-583-6853. Again, 714 714- Five eight three six eight five three, and with that, let's get Harsh on the air with us and jump right in. So, Harsh, good morning. Thanks for joining us today, and can't wait to catch up with you. Thanks, Lisa, for the introduction, and uh, excited to be here. Good morning to you and to all our listeners, and then thank you for everyone for tuning in. So. Really excited to discuss more and talk more about uh, the travels and, and what I've been learning and, and how our company is growing to um, to help players and coaches uh, get better and enhance player development. So very excited for the show. One of the things I have to share, because this was just one of those like reminders of how small the tennis world is, so I was in Minneapolis um, a couple weeks ago, or gosh, maybe just a week ago. I, uh, time has gotten all foggy for me. But um, anyway, I was in Minneapolis recently <laughs> at the University of Minnesota um, watching some college tennis. And uh, I look up, and what do I see but a big banner with your name on it, Harsh, as an All-American <laughs> from the University of Minnesota. So that was the coolest thing. And, and of course, I had to text you right away to let you know that I was staring at your name. But um, it was just such a – one of those weird tennis moments for me and uh, kind of gave me the chills a little bit. So congratulations to you on that accomplishment during your college years. Yeah, thank you. And, and uh, you brought the warm weather. So it's uh, it's been a really interesting uh, winter so far here, it's been so warm and, uh, you know, global warming is definitely taking effect. But, uh, no, the University of Minnesota has been great to me. It was uh, a fantastic place to develop my game. Uh, coach Getz, who, who was my coach, and, and Adam Cohen, the assistant coach, great coaching team, put together a phenomenal program. My teammates were great. And, you know, that's that's the beauty of college tennis is is you come into this team setting. You have great support. And uh, the competition is is, is uh, really strong. The facilities are very good. And it just gives you an opportunity for a few years to develop your game, play against the best players in the world, and, and be supported by a team. And I think that combination was uh, the perfect timing for me at that point in my life. And it really helped me to elevate my game and, and eventually play on the tour and, and represent India and Davis Cup. So, I owe a lot to the University of Minnesota, and I'm very happy to see how they've been improving. The facilities are world-class now. Um, I'm working with the women's team uh, on tennis, and we can chat more about that. But 
uh, it's a university that's given me a lot in my life and I'm very grateful to them at every stage. Uh, and so I owe a lot to them for who I am today. Yeah, their facilities are amazing, and I have to say, I mean, I, you know, I'm a big fan of University of Georgia, living here and close by Athens, and the facilities in Athens are unbelievable, but I think University of Minnesota's indoor facility rivals any I've visited so far. I mean, it's it's just incredible, and, and the athletic complex in general, and they just have done a phenomenal job. So um, kudos to University of Minnesota for supporting men's tennis and women's tennis and, you know, doing what, what they can to promote the sport and, and keep it growing. I just, I, I was just in awe of, of everything I saw there. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah it was no, it's... pretty awesome. Yeah, and then the opportunity to, to you know, get a world-class education. I think that's uh, a great benefit of, of, of going to college and spending a few years is to really develop your game, but also to get a world-class education. And then you're, you know, well set for uh, the rest of your life, whether you choose to play professionally, as I did for many years, or, uh, you know, uh, players want to go into the workforce. And so it really opens up tremendous possibilities and gives players options that I think is, is fantastic. And, um, you know, the relationships, too, that, that one develops in school with the coaches, with uh, players, those are lifelong relationships that, that come, you know, in handy all the time. I mean, whenever I'm faced with a crossroads in my life, I pick up the phone and talk to my coach, you know. Uh, so, and I've talked to some other coaches, and that, that I think it really sets you up for life, and uh, it's, it's a great opportunity. And I'm so glad that I came to the U.S. and spent a few years in college and went through that experience. Sure. And and I want to just say to my listeners, um, for those of you interested in learning more about Harsha's background and, and his life in tennis, we did a podcast earlier this year, and you can find that on the Parenting Aces YouTube channel if you want to go back and listen and um, learn a little bit more about him. Because I don't want to rehash that stuff today, Harsh. I really want to focus on tenacity and your travels and, and meetings with various coaches and what you're learning by talking to all these folks out there, developing juniors, developing college players, um, you know, what, what are they looking for from Tenicity and, and what is Tenicity able to provide them and maybe talk a little bit about, you know, how you're tweaking uh, the website and the technology to best serve these coaches. Yeah, no, thank you for the question. So I think at, a, at the key, I'll focus on the key aspects. So firstly, focus and sort of that moving the team, whether it's a college setting or a junior academy or a club, your team of coaches and players, there's a need to, to align everyone on the same page, to make sure that everyone's moving in the right direction. There's the right plan in place, there's focus, and that's a big need, uh, and we're helping them with that. So, for example, every player has a player dashboard on Tenacity, and that's a place where the game assessment, the strengths, the areas of opportunity, the goals are all uh, sort of uh, – that's where it resides, that information. And it's so important to have that in one place that's easily accessible by the coach, by the players, by the parents. And so we're really helping them to drive a lot of focus and commitment in the direction that they want it to, to go in. Uh, so that's one. Secondly, as you have this vision and a game plan, it's important to be able to manage development and also track it so that you have a sense of whether things are progressing in the right uh, and, in, and learn from it. So this is very important. And at every level, and you know whether it's a, a junior group that's trying to develop certain skills so the players can progress to the next level, or it's a collegiate program that wants to go from being top 50 to top 10, uh, or if it's a professional player who's looking to go to the next level. Once you've identified what you need to work on, you've got to have the ability to manage that and to learn from it and make adjustments as needed. And so we're helping them do that in a very systematic way. And so I think those are the two key areas is really bringing a lot of focus bringing that alignment and collaboration within the team and helping them manage player development, learn from it, and grow from it. So one of the words that keeps coming up 
from a lot of the coaches. And what we are driving also towards is this growth mindset uh, to grow and learn from practice, from matches, from the videos, from all of these aspects, from the data. And, and that's where we, we're really working with them a, a lot is to develop this culture of growth and develop the growth mindset so that ultimately the players are getting better and improving and developing. Yeah, for sure. It's interesting. There's an article currently on ParentingAces.com called um, Want Tennis Results, Educate the Parents. And one of the, the takeaways from that article, and it was submitted to me by Frank Jampolo, who wrote the Tennis Parents Bible, uh, is exactly what you're saying, the need to have a plan and then to be able to track progress alongside the plan to make sure that, you know, that, that things are, as you said, moving in the right direction. I think a lot of us feel that, you know, our kids sometimes are just floundering out there. We're continuing to pay for lessons. We're continuing to take them to tournaments. And we're just not seeing a lot of change in the right direction. So can you talk a little bit more about what you're hearing from junior coaches in particular about how they can use tenacity to, you know, in, in um, specific terms to help make sure that the progress is, is actually happening. Yeah, it's it's an important uh, aspect of coaching that we, we need to have a system in place to like you said, manage that development, and that includes tracking, that includes giving feedback. And uh, the coaches that I've met are trying to sort of wrap their hands around that. How do you do it? And when the numbers get large, or even if you're working with a smaller team, there is this component of time, right? And so they're very busy. You're doing a lot of hours on the court. And then, um, you know, there's some time involved. So we are working with them on that. And one of the uh, benefits of our platform is once we set up those assessments, and it could be a qualitative monthly you know, development report where the coach goes in and shares some thoughts on how the month went, what they worked on, and what was progress like. So once we set that up and we can customize it to the program and their methodology, but once it's set up, then it becomes very e- efficient. You pull up the assessment, uh, input the information and instantly share it with the players and parents. All the time spent sort of emailing each other between the coaching team, sharing information. You know, there are Word documents going around. There's emails going around, text messages, spreadsheets. All of that is streamlined and made a lot more simple. Uh, and so that's what we're working with them on. We're taking the logistics problem away, which is the barrier. You know, when we talk about why aren't assessments happening or why aren't parents getting the feedback? A lot of times it's the logistics that's becoming the issue. That's the barrier. It's not that the coaches don't want to do it. It's just that it it becomes difficult. They don't know how to manage that communication and organize it. And so that's where we're coming in. And we've built a platform which makes it very simple for them and yet very effective in how they can quickly communicate valuable feedback back to the parents, back to the players, and so that's one of the key aspects where a lot of coaches are seeing value in this in our system is just to help them manage their time better and be much more effective in their role as coaches, uh, ultimately to help the players gain from the clarity, the parents to be on the same page, and then uh, sort of move that progression along. Uh, so, so that's one area. The other area is, you know, at a high level, we're thinking about engagement. And so we want engagement from the coaches. We also want engagement from the players. Uh, And so there are certain assessments that are player-driven. For example, it might be a goal-setting assessment where it's actually the player who shares his or her thoughts on what they want to achieve. So we're working with them on those aspects as well of how do we get more engagement from the players and, again, have all of that information in one place which is easily accessible by all of those involved in the player's team. So when we think about a lot of player development, we're really thinking about engagement from everyone uh, and not just the coaches, you know, who are now accountable or have to do certain things. It's it's a two-way street here. 
and we want to be that bridge between the coach and the player and really help in that aspect, that relationship, and managing it over time. One of the academies that you recently met with is High Altitude Tennis uh, in Colorado, and the head coach there, Ryan, has been on this show before, and I love his coaching philosophy. Couldn't you share some details of your time there, what you saw, where you feel like Tenicity can help them do better? Because they're already really good there. I mean, they are committed to communication and, um, you know, holding the kids accountable and all of that. So I, I'd love to hear, you know, how that meeting went, the, the parts you can share. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, I'll, I'll talk at a high level with the uh, academies without sort of going into specifics with certain academies uh, but, but you know, it's a great opportunity to work with high-altitude tennis and similar academies across the world. We're working with a program in Spain, um, and I had a chance to spend a few hours with their director of tennis and really look at their system, and uh, and so I can talk more about that. And we're working with academies in India as well uh, and other academies in the U.S. With high-altitude tennis, it was a wonderful opportunity to support uh, the philosophy and methodology they already have in place and I think, again, the big benefit is is to bring it all in one place for them. So they were sh- they're sharing videos, instructional videos, match videos. We have a place for that on our platform. The same place we have the player goals, their, their objectives over the next six months. Um, then there are the assessments that they do on a regular basis to, to gauge how the players are improving, to provide feedback within their team and also to the players. So all of that is in one place again. And that now they don't have to go to five different places uh, for five different things. We're streamlining all of the communication. We're making it much more simple uh, for everyone associated with the program. And the big benefit is they're learning now from their information. And so none of it is getting lost. And so this is one of the key challenges and needs in, in the tennis industry is much of the player development information is getting lost over time. Or, uh, you know, either it's not being captured. So, for example, uh, how a player is progressing, it might be an assessment, uh, monthly assessment. If it's happening on a piece of paper, that might get lost or, or, you know, the tediousness or the time aspect leads to things not happening. So, so we're helping them to manage their information and learn from it. One of the key things on our platform is not only is the information there, but it's formatted in a way that you can look at it over time and learn from it and generate some insights. You can see trends. And so this is sort of the future uh, as we think about developing our product as well is we want to play a a bigger role in how we help programs, coaches to sort of learn from what is happening and play play a more proactive role in in the generation of insight, even helping players to understand where they need to improve, how they're performing relative to other players in the group, relative to the next progression, relative to sort of some benchmarks that the coaches have identified. So as we put all of the pieces together, I think there's a lot more clarity for everyone involved in the team. And again, coming back to that growth mindset where people are really learning and they have clarity on what they need to do to get to the next level. So if an academy decides to implement Tenicity, utilize the platform, can you talk us through what that looks like for you know, what what type of work is required from the coach, what is required from the player, what is required from the parent, and maybe then talk us through, you know, on a on an ongoing basis, um, what each of those members of the team can expect to learn and see. Yeah. So we can customize the platform to the needs of the program. And so a collegiate program has certain specific needs that would be different from a junior academy. Um, so one of the things, when, so I, again, I'll sort of try to generalize, uh, but I'll talk about some of the common factors. So one of the aspects that is being used a fair bit is the uh, player dashboard. So when you add a player on the platform, a dashboard is automatically created. And that's where the coach has to do some work up front to provide a game assessment, list the strengths, the areas that the player needs to work on, and the player's goals. 
so that's some work up front, but then it's an evolving process, right? So if I'm working with a player, the first time uh, I would have to see the player play and then develop an understanding of the player and then create a dashboard where I can provide the player with an assessment with things that they need to work on. But then from a month-to-month basis, that sort of evolves. Uh, we, you know, I don't anticipate all of that information changing drastically in one month. You're at, that, at that point, then you're sort of modifying it as the player achieves those objects. So, yes, there is some work up front in, in, in uh, putting the information and sharing it on the dashboard, but then over time it really is a quick sort of relook, review, and, uh, and it sort of evolves. Secondly, player coaches are already sharing videos. I mean, one of the things we're noticing is a much more use of instructional videos, match videos. That's happening in the collegiate se- segment. Most of the programs uh, have live streaming. They have the videos. They want players to watch the videos. And even at the junior academy uh, setting, coaches are sharing videos. And that's so, so we're helping in, in sharing that, those videos much more effectively. It's then there on the platform for the players to watch and review. We know that retention is very important. So if I watch a video once, uh, that's good. But if I watch the video two or three times, that's going to be even better. So, uh, you know, instead of emailing the video to the player and now that video sort of being in their inbox and over six months you have 15 different videos all cluttering your inbox, here on the platform, those videos are there for you that you can quickly pull up with many of the search filters that we've built in. And so that aids in retention. So in terms of your question, it might be the coach who shares the video, which they're already doing, so we're not adding to the workload. Uh, And then it's the players who go in and watch the videos. Um, And it could be the other way around. It could be that the coach provides an assignment and says, you know, a specific sort of uh, assignment on a skill, and then it's the coach or the parent who's there who shoots the video and then shares it with the coach. So it can work both ways. Um, And that needs to be defined by the program and by the coach. So I think that's that's one other example. Um, The third example is the assessments. So once we have those assessments in place, then it might be the coach who goes in at a periodic interval and then shares that information with the players and provides feedback. What we're finding is that it it generally works as a two-way street where part of the assessment is uh, information from the players. So in that case, it would be the player logging in and sharing the information with the coach. So it really depends on how the program wants to manage that dynamic, but uh, there, there is that engagement, again, I come back to that word, where it's very important to have engagement from the coach, from the player, for player development uh, to be enhanced. And, and, you know, you can term that as commitment or accountability, um, but that's, a, that's an essential ingredient in helping players to get to the next level. Just a coach who's highly committed without that same commitment from the players is not going to work. So it, it has to come both ways. So... In terms of time commitment, I mean, it sounds like it could range anywhere from a few minutes per player to, you know, an hour per player from the coach, um, depending on where they are in the player's development. And then from the player, him or herself, again, you know, anywhere from a few minutes to an hour, let's say, a week um, to update things. And and then is there a piece for for the parents, too, to input other than uploading video? Is there a, an opportunity for the parents to um, offer insights or observations? Absolutely, yep. The parents can do it, too, and, again, determined by the program. And uh, this way, if the parents are sharing their thoughts in, you know, in an organized way where the player also has the opportunity to share their thoughts. And, you know, we want to manage that communication well. And so we support the program in, in managing it. You know, it does happen sometimes where uh, parents are watching a match and then you ask the, the player how they did. And then before you know it, the parents giving their, their input and then the player's voice is not being heard. So we got to manage that post-match feedback really well. And and what we do on our platform, and that's one of the key value uh, drivers, and and a lot of programs are using this, is uh, the match results, but also the evaluations that are being shared on the platform. So uh, the player can go in after the match, share the result, and then also their notes and thoughts on the match with the coach. And the parent can do that as well, and it's all organized there. So the coach can then respond. 
Uh, and we we can also customize this to the format that the program wants that uh, post match evaluation to be done. So it's not you know it's more structured that way. I have a certain structure that I use with my program and players. I want them to evaluate their match in a certain way, which I believe um, enhances learning. And most programs have uh, have a format, so um, we can really channelize the communication in, in that way, and and so everyone has a voice. And uh, again, the players can learn from it and improve for the next match. But in terms what of time, of speed? Uh, just to oh. add, oops, oops, Go yeah, ahead. yeah just, just to make a quick point on the time, this isn't any additional time from what players and coaches are already spending. Um, we're actually making it simple and we're taking away time. Uh, we feel that right now the system is inefficient. Uh, coaches are spending too much time on the communication. They're spending too much time trying to find all of this communication uh, over, over time. So really, we're going to save a lot of time for everyone involved. We're going to help the nation better, and we're going to help everyone learn from it and grow from it and, and be better prepared for the, next, uh, for the next practice session or the next match. So that's one of the aspects we're working with programs on, and initially that was a little bit of a concern, but as people understand Tennessee more, uh, really, is, it's going to save a lot of time, uh, and, uh, and, and that's the feedback that we're getting as well. Great. So I was, well, that's a good segue. So <laughs> I would love to hear specifically what type of feedback you're getting from all three components of the team, the coach, the player, and the parent. Um, you know, what are people saying about it, and how are they using it so far um, you know, and, and are, are you getting like assessments back or, um, you know, I, I just, I'm curious as to how it's being, um, kind of accepted into specifically the junior world. Yeah, I'll, uh, so I'll start with the junior development. So we just rolled out with a large program, and currently their systems, uh, talking about the internal team, that's the feedback, that there's a lot of communication and Word documents and spreadsheets, and so it's all taking a lot of time and very difficult for them to manage it. So they see Tenacity as a way to really simplify much of the communication, to bring all of the coaches on the same page. This is very important. I think we talked about it last time. When there are multiple coaches working with a group of players, it's very important to have the coaches on the same page and to make sure that if an assessment is provided, that assistant coach or the third coach also has visibility into it. They know that the assessment has been given. They know what's been written in the assessment. And so that's a, a big benefit to a lot of these programs is the instant sharing and the visibility of that information. Uh, so then all the coaches are on the same page, and, and what that's going to translate into is, um, you know, if one coach is working on one thing, you're not going to have the other coach two days later work on something completely different and start the players on a totally different plan. So that team alignment is very important. And so they like tenacity in how it brings their team together, how it simplifies the communication and brings it in one place. Secondly, they do like the matches piece where this feedback from matches is a critical part of the feedback loop. Um, so they're losing much of this feedback right now uh, when the coaches aren't able to be at the different tournaments, players are playing tournaments all around. And so this way the coaches can get the information back and it's again organized in a place that they can review it, look at it, and, uh, and, and sort of learn from it over time. So the matches piece is very important. And then the third piece is some structure around the assessments, really putting some process in place uh, and committing to that. So, uh, and then they can, they can showcase this value to the players and parents. That if you join our program, here's what you're going to get. In addition to the on-court teaching, in addition to what we're saying our training methodology is, here's how we're going to implement it. Here's how we're going to execute on it. So these are the three or four things that you can uh, expect from us. So, for example, your child will have a player dashboard. Here, the game assessment will be there. We'll be providing you with information on what we're working on. Secondly, every month, you'll get an assessment from us to talk about how, uh, what was worked on, how they're progressing, and, and that can be customized to the format. So they could be programs could look at different things that are, that are more important to them. But the important piece here is that they, they would communicate or they're committing to communicating that information to the players and parents. Thirdly, you can provide some videos 
Uh, you can use, uh, you know, different sort of technology tools that we built in to support the development of the players. So the players are now watching themselves or they're watching other players and learning from that. So it's a very clear value proposition that you can provide to the players and parents and really exceed their expectations, differentiate your coaching program from all of the other coaching programs. Uh, and so that's, that's really uh, what programs are able to do. And uh, we're still young as a company. Our relationships with many of these programs are still, is still sort of in the initial phase. And we'll have to see how it plays out over time. Um, you know, I'll talk personally. I've been running a program for the last one year. And this is the same methodology that I use in Tennessee. It's uh, an integral part of how I run my program. And my players uh, are, are very happy with the support they have, the clarity they have. They understand how they're progressing. Uh, I'm able to gauge how committed they are to the process. My parents are very happy as well because now they have information that they never had. Many of my parents were switching from one program to the other. Uh, I had a parent who was very frustrated before he joined me, didn't really know what his daughter was working on, was spending a lot of money, was investing a lot of time, and really had no idea what was going on. Uh, and so now, since they've joined me, it's been a year now, uh, from where he was to where he is today is a completely different place. Today he understands very clearly what we're working on. He has information on even the details, on how many shots his daughter can hit in the court. You know, what's that consistency? What's her consistency like? What's her accuracy like? You know, what are we trying to aim towards and how are we getting there? And what do we all need to do to help her uh, achieve her goals? So uh, once they have that information, you know, my retention is 100% and my parents are very happy. And uh, and I feel that I'm exceeding their expectations. So I'm working hard every day to to prove my value to the players, to the pa to the parents that work with me. And I think you know the coaches that I've come across, a lot of them are passionate and committed to doing that. And I think we can really support them to uh, to differentiate their coaching and be coaches that uh, you know the players and parents really value and would never think of leaving to go to another program. Is there a way that parents can find out which academies are using Tenicity or are in, you know, in communication with you about implementing Tenicity? Because I can tell you as, you know, as a parent, it, that would be a, a deal breaker for me. You know, if I had, if I were looking at a couple different coaching opportunities for my child and one used your platform and one didn't, um, that's kind of a no-brainer decision. Exactly, yeah. And so, you know, as we build out our website, we definitely want to promote our partners. And uh, and that's information that currently, you know, uh, I, I've been I've been promoting through through our marketing efforts. But it's a place that on our website we will start. Uh, we'll have a have a place that players and parents can can visit and then know which are the tenacity programs. But you know, you're going to know that because the programs are going to promote their association with us and the fact that they're using this platform. Uh, and so that's that's a key part of how they're going to promote their programs and then it's going to help them, as I said, differentiate their programs. And, and they feel that that's one way they can really attract top players and more commitment from the from the players and parents too. So, uh, no, I'm glad to hear that. Uh, that's, that's the feedback we've got. And intuitively, that's what I thought, that when we can communicate the plan and, and inform parents and educate them on, on what's going on. I think that's huge value. And I can see parents getting behind that. So, so um, we're hoping for parents to really, uh, you know, get behind Tenacity. And, and if there are parents listening in uh, and there are players listening in who feel like they really don't have clarity on the plan, they're not getting a regular feedback, uh, it's sort of haphazard, it's, there's really no systematic approach and you're spending a lot of money, you're spending a lot of time, you should be asking for more. And there is, a, you know, our platform is, is there to support that. And, and so do bring it up with the coaches. But, you know, the, the expectations should be higher. If you're sending your child to a, to a, to a program, um, at the very least, you should be getting an assessment. You should be getting a monthly uh, assessment on how they're performing, what they're working on. And so, so that's where I feel the coaching industry is going to move towards, and the programs that are moving with us, uh, you know, are, are going in that direction. They're committed to going in that direction, and the ones that are going to continue, sort of, just uh, running things as they have been in the past, um, you know, I think uh, over time we'll see. But 
but I think those programs uh, are going to have to think about how you know how I, I don't know. I think that model is is short lived, uh, and uh, so I'm quite excited about that because uh, this is where player development needs to go, and and we want to play a role in that. I mean, to be perfectly honest with you, you know, the the whole communication piece is the reason I started Parenting Aces to begin with. Um, you know, I was so frustrated as a parent not being able to get the information that I felt uh, I should be having from from my child's coach. And uh, I, to me, this is just it's brilliant, and it should be one of those things that. You know, if if the academy has the money to invest and and tenacity isn't, I mean the price point is very doable for most people, I would think. Uh, so you know the price shouldn't be a barrier to getting this going. And and even you know, and I think we talked about this last time, Harsh. You know, even passing along some of the costs to the parents themselves, I don't think there are many parents out there that would balk at paying a little bit extra to have this type of information at their fingertips. That's right. And so we want to help programs improve player development. And we feel that there's really strong, you know, our, like you said, the price point uh, is, is uh, very affordable. And uh, programs can monetize it the way they see best with the players and parents. But for the most part, uh, you know, as one parent says, the, the, the money they invest in tenacity ensures that the next $800 that they spend are spent well. This is a really important point. Um, you know, this is an investment. This is not a cost. And that's something that I keep telling the programs, I tell the players, I tell the parents, that your the money that you're spending on a platform like tenacity, that's giving you the right plan, that's giving you feedback on progress, that's guiding you towards your goals, that's ensuring that you're learning from every opportunity. That's an investment in your tennis, and you absolutely need to make that investment. Uh, if you're just going to continue to play and, and go there, play tennis, hit some balls, come home, uh, then, you know, I think that's okay for a certain group of players, you know, but for, for players that are looking to get better and maximize it, I say this uh, a lot, it's, it's maximizing the potential of the players. So wherever that may be, for some players that might be professional tennis, for some players it might be collegiate tennis, for some players it might be junior tennis, and that that's fine. But I think that parents can get behind the thought that they want to give their children the best opportunity to maximize their potential, and that's where we want to help. That's what Tennessee is about. It's about helping the programs to put together a structure, to put together a program that gives the children the best opportunity to maximize their potential. And for that, I believe parents would be willing to spend a little bit more than what they're already doing to give their children the best opportunity. And, you know, when a parent told me that, that it's, 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 this is something that I would absolutely do to ensure that, you know, the next eight weeks, the, the, the money that I'm spending is well spent, then I know that we're on the right track. And that's really what we're driven to do here. Uh, and, uh, and, again, I'm very optimistic. I'm excited at what I've heard from a lot of the coaches Many of the coaches are passionate in the same direction. They want to give the, their players the best opportunity to maximize their potential. They're working hard on that. They're thinking about athletic skills. So, you know, as we talk about junior programs, one of the things they're working on is not just the tennis skills, but we're thinking holistically about player development. The tennis skills is one part of it. Fitness is one part of it. Nutrition. How do we give the players the best opportunity in all of these aspects and bring all of those assessments, bring that information in one place? Uh, so that's where I'm, uh, you know, excited to work with the programs on is to really streamline much of this information and help them to holistically develop players because we know fitness is a big part of tennis and increasingly so. So as much as we're trying to develop the tennis skills, we've got to make sure that the trainer is aligned with the tennis coach and the nutritionist is aligned with both of them. So there's so much collaboration and communication that needs to happen between all of those involved in, in the player's development and uh, we're we're trying to help, you know, uh, with with all of that. What type of support does Tenicity give to a coach? Let's say you have uh, a young coach, and I don't mean just chronological age, but young in the field, um, you know, maybe new to coaching. 
uh, and they they may not have the knowledge or skills necessary to do these types of plans and and you know understand how to communicate. Um, do you help walk them through that to set things up so that moving forward they're progressing along the right path in terms of that communication? Yeah, that's true. And so that's part of our onboarding process where I work closely with the team to um, I, to first learn about their program and understand what their current setup is. Um, you know, things like are they doing assessments, are they, are they providing evaluations and so forth. Um, and then once I learn more about their program, I work with them uh, to really put together uh, the assessments, uh, all of these different things to put that whole system together. So in terms of what type of assessments, we can do some very simple notes-based assessments, um, you know, identify a few categories that they'd like to track, uh, that they'd like to provide feedback on. We can set that up for them, and then it becomes very easy for them to go in there, add some notes, and then share it with the player and the parent. Um, we can set up some assessments where, like I said, it's player-led, so some simple goal setting or, um, or other assessments that, again, are note space that the player can share with the coach. Um, we can also set up some simple quantitative assessments, so things like, uh, you know, numbers are great. I mean, to put numbers in there, uh, I think there's a lot of value, and I'm working with some experts in the field of analytics, but... I think anytime we can put some numbers to uh, whether it's math statistics or ratings or even quantifying some sometimes some notes, uh, you know, once there are numbers in the picture, we can really see trends over time. So working with them to try to see what simple things we can do on the court to get a sense of uh, the skills of the player and how those are developing. So for a foundational level, it might be around, you know, learning the right grip, learning the right swing form, consistency, and as the player improves, you go more into accuracy, control of the ball. At advanced levels, you go more into power and so forth. So it's really data around all of that and capturing that data and then looking at it over time to see, you know, are players really getting better? I mean, this is a big question, right? We, we have um, as players, as parents, and as coaches, uh, you know, as, as a coaching team, um, you know, are you really helping players improve? <laughs> that, that's, that's a question. And, uh, you know, we're, we're trying to help them understand that better. Uh, and if it's, if it's, you know, if it's a situation where players are really not improving, that's also good information because then we can understand, okay, what needs to be done differently and where are the gaps and how can we become better as a coaching team? So we're working with programs to put some of these very simple assessments in place that, um, that allow them to learn and uh, develop players in a systematic way. You know, it's funny because another aspect of tenacity that we really haven't talked about, I don't think, but that you just described perfectly is it, the ability to provide mentoring to the coaches. And this is an idea that has come up again on this podcast several times over the years is the need for coaches to have mentors and to then be a mentor to young coaches coming up behind them. Uh, it's the only way to grow as a coach, right? It, I mean, it, it's true what, no matter what you do in life. It's, it's so important to have mentors in your life. And tenacity sort of has that piece built in because – you guys are working with these coaches and like you said, you know, looking at the statistics, looking at the analytics to say, Hey, what's working here? You know, why is it working? What's not working? Why isn't it working? What do we need to tweak here? I mean, that's another invaluable benefit of using your platform. That's right. Yep. And, and that, that's really true. So as we work with more programs, we're really learning about industry best practices and uh, we can help coaches to, um, you know, identify the right assessments for them, for example, set it up. Uh, a lot of programs do ask me, you know, about that. How, how are we doing? Or, you know, we'd be, we'd be open to, to some more ideas. And so we can really help the coaches uh, with more information. And uh, and help them grow as coaches. And technology is a big part of of the future. Um, you know, you go to any tennis tournament. Kids are on 
kids are on their cell phones. I mean, I was at a professional tournament. I went to the player lounge, and all the players are, you know, typing away on their mobile phones. So how do we communicate with them on a medium that everybody is on? This is important for coaches to be thinking through this um, because the next five years, ten years, we're moving in that direction. Now, you know, people get sometimes there's some pushback to technology, and I understand that. I come from tennis. I've lived my whole life in tennis. So I understand that. And and I think that background really helps because we understand technology's place in tennis, um, and and we're really driving towards making it simple yet effective. So we can help coaches to um, enhance their skills in how they use technology, in how they communicate with the players and parents, how they improve their coaching. Uh, and we have we have many examples that we can share with them and training resources. I've built a lot of short videos. I myself have spent a lot of time with coaches and we work closely with the different programs. And so over time, um, we will be... Uh, uplifting the, the level of coaching. And by doing that, we are helping players get better because our goal is to really help players get better and, and enhance player development. Well, that's only going to happen if the coaching gets better. And uh, so, so I think that's, that's, you know, there's so much opportunity there, like you said, to, uh, to really work with organizations in the coaching industry, to work with coaches, work together, develop partnerships, and see how together we can really elevate the standard of coaching at every level of the game um, because it's so important. You know, I, I, I read an article a uh, couple of years back, and it just stuck with my mind. I think it was a European country. It might have been Switzerland. And one of their top player development uh, uh, people was saying that we want our best coaches to work at the grassroots level. And that point really stuck with me is that, you know, the best coaches, they wanted to channel their top, you know, these are professional players with the best knowledge. They wanted them to be working with players at the age of 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So we have to, here in the U.S. and across the world, we have to think about the quality of coaching at that level when the kids are that young and then through junior development. And we want to make sure that we're elevating that because those years, as, as you know, Lisa, they're, they're formative years and very important years, and, and, what, and how players are developed in those early years can make a huge impact on how far they progress uh, later in, in their Absolutely. journey. Absolutely. We are down to uh, just a little more than 10 minutes left in the hour, and I wanted to make sure that we touch on tenacity's use at the college level because, um, you know, I think the majority of Parenting Aces listeners and readers, college tennis is the end of the line for their kids. Um, the majority of them are, you know, hopefully training to play in college. And, and I think it's important to understand how technology is being used in college tennis in terms of continuing that player development because a lot of these kids, you know, they're going to college to continue to get better. Um, not because they have aspirations of making a living playing professional tennis, but again, like you said, they 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 want to maximize their potential, and and they don't want that growth and development to stop when they finish with their junior tennis years. So, so can you give us a little more information on how the colleges are looking at tennisity and and maybe looking to implement it? Yeah, absolutely. So uh, one point before I talk about sort of how colleges are using it, one of the capabilities that we're thinking through and, and, and trying to build is to to help in the recruiting process too. And so, um, you know, as junior players are on our platform and their development is being managed on our platform, when they reach that juncture that they're looking at colleges, we want to be helping the players, the parents, and the coaches at that moment with how they communicate information to the college programs across the country. So we want to help present the player uh, in the best possible way. And I'm not just saying results, but things that college coaches look at, such as commitment, effort, uh, attitude, how they're progressing over time. So this is a whole different segment here that we want to, we want to add value to that as well. So, uh, you know, as parents are listening to this, we're just not a platform that you can use to to share information. This information is going to be very valuable, and we and we'll be there behind the program to, uh, like I said, really enhance 
uh, the opportunity for the player as they look at different colleges. Uh, moving to the college segment, uh, I think we're a great fit uh, for the college programs, and, and, and it's, it's, we're getting traction. More and more head coaches are looking at our platform uh, very seriously uh, because of a couple of things. One is the, uh, the need to drive focus. There's a lot that, that's going on in the, in the collegiate environment. There's a lot of, you know, there's academics, there's a social piece, uh, tennis, and it's important to have the ability to really bring everybody on the same page, make sure that the players are going in the right direction, managing that well. So uh, that's a key piece. Secondly, I think learning from matches and using our matches page very strategically. So um, when, they play, when they're playing matches against different schools on Tenicity, not only can you have the results of the match, but, you, but it captures all the notes around how your player played, but also on the opponent. So you're building a very rich database of knowledge on your players and also on the opposition. And it's there for you. That information is not going to be lost. And you can find it very quickly. So tomorrow, if you're playing a school, let's say six months down the line, you're playing the same school. Within five seconds, you can pull up all of the information that you have on that school that you have you know, shared. And that, that's going to impact your strategy. Uh, you know, it's going to enhance your strategy. It might be some notes. It might be a video that you want to quickly look at, you know, the, oppo the opponent's game, because uh, we're, we're also sharing videos on the platform. So uh, in terms of the strategy and competitive advantage, uh, we can really help schools to, uh, to capture this information and learn from it. And from the player standpoint, it's great because now um, – this information is being shared within the team. So if my teammate has played a certain player and there are notes on that player, I know where I need to go to, to to learn a little bit more about that player before I play the match against the player. So it really is a centralized place where everyone on the team can go to to, um, to plan their strategy and learn from it. So that's, uh, that's the second piece. The third piece is uh, the videos. So I just had a coach call me the other day and they said, you know, we have all these videos but when we're sharing it with the players, but we really don't know if the players are watching them and, and you know, we don't have a great way to share the videos and, and we're looking for a better system. So on our platform, not only can you share the video, but, but we're providing insights and analytics uh, you know, on the back end to say, okay, are these videos being watched? What's engagement like? And hopefully helping programs learn from it and say, okay, you know, if, if the longer videos, for example, are not being watched, what else can we do to make sure that, you know, those key parts are being watched by the player. How do we grow engagement? So there's so much potential here to help colleges understand, um, you know, their, the engagement from their players and, and, and certain things that they can do to, to players watching things more, to, to get players sort of learning more. Uh, and so we're just scratching the surface here, but I'd say those are the three key areas. Are you hearing from college coaches um, about, you know, budget restrictions and, you know, um, how am I going to get the money to pay for this? Because not every school is a University of Georgia or, a, a, you know, UCLA where they've got these big budgets. Um, a lot of them are struggling. And, you know, I mean, are you helping them problem solve in that arena as well? Yeah, we're working with them. And we're, you know, we're not that – we're coming in at a price point that we feel that most colleges can, it fits well in their budget or they can raise funding for it, uh, donor support. So, you know, there are other uh, systems that are very expensive. Uh, Playside is one that's $10,000 per court and there's a monthly fee. And so that's, you know, there's only few schools that have the budget. But for all the other schools that are looking for another system that, you know, is equally comparable in terms of, capturing the data, learning from the data, we're a really good alternative at a price point that uh, many schools can afford. So uh, if there's any school out there that feels that they're at a disadvantage because the other school has or the competitor has a highly sophisticated system, they don't have to feel that way. We, we can accomplish a lot with tenacity within their budget. And, uh, you know, I, I feel that, uh, that we can be a great, great uh, support and one more piece that, that helps them grow their program, differentiate their program, and, and, and build a, a top-quality program. 
Fantastic. So, again, I want to just let the listeners know um, the videos that you alluded to that explain more about the Tenicity platform and how it works, those are also on the Parenting Aces YouTube channel. Harsh has shared those with me over the past several months, and um, we've uploaded them. And so if you want more information on Tenicity's kind of specifics, how it really works, what it looks like, uh, you can go check out those videos on YouTube on uh, the Parenting Aces channel and also on Tenicity's website and Facebook page. Harsh is doing a great job or I don't know, Harsh, is it just you or do you have a team with you that's doing all the social media because uh, you're, you're fantastic at it? Yeah, it's, you know, it's uh, it's just me right now. We have a small team, but uh, it's been a great experience to start a company and, and grow it. And I've learned so much, and you have to do it all. Uh, social media is, is great because it uh, changed the playing field for a lot of startups uh, that don't have the resources. So uh, I've just learned a lot through the process. It's been a great experience, and, um, and so thank you for that. And, uh, you know, we'll just try to get the word out as much as we can and, uh, and I think uh, I'm very optimistic in seeing a lot of traction now. And um, so, yep, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll be around <laughs> and, and growing. Another thing I want to just point out to the listeners is, you know, one of the things that interested me about having you on the show, Harsh, is I think it's important for parents to hear from people who came up through tennis, who played college tennis, who may have, you know, tried their hand at the pro tour, what are they doing when they're no longer making a living competing on the court? You know, what are the options out there for my kid once he or she is no longer actually playing tennis? And I think, you know, what you've done with tennisity in terms of combining your passion for this beautiful sport with the phenomenal education you got at the University of Minnesota um, and and then sharing that with the world I it's just it's it's beautiful to me I, I love it and I I hope that parents understand that you know this is just one more way that that tennis benefits your child it's it's not just about developing a skill set on the tennis court but developing tools that they can implement no matter what they do in their lives. And and kudos to you and, you know, continued success to you and to Tenicity. Thank you, Lisa. I appreciate that. It's it's really true. I mean, much of starting a new company takes passion. It takes resilience. And these are qualities that I learned in tennis. So uh, this is what I draw on every day. And so, you know, I tell my parents also that, uh, and, and I get the question a lot from, from parents is, you know, should we be playing, should we be uh, encouraging our children more, what's going to happen? There are no guarantees in terms of the result in sport, but I can say this, that the qualities that you learn, the character that you build playing tennis is going to serve you well in anything you do. And, and you know, it's the possibilities are immense. Uh, there's a lot of appreciation in the business world, in different settings for athletes, uh, and people really understand that it takes a lot of commitment, hard work, uh, resiliency to, to, to develop your game and to progress over time. So uh, I always encourage parents to, to you know, uh, keep, keep going. Don't, don't let results discourage you. Don't let the thought that, you know, your, your child may not become a collegiate or may not become a professional player discourage you from continuing on in the journey because the fact that they're on the court, they're going to practice, they're learning a ton. And and sometimes adversity is great too. The the, the adversity that they're facing in tennis are, are are lessons that they can draw on later in their life. So um, yeah, it's it's uh, it's really a great sport and teaches uh, teaches one a lot. Well, Harsh, thanks again for coming on. Um, let's just give a shout out to your website one more time. It's www.tenicity.com. And let me just spell that for you guys. It's T E N I C I T Y. Uh, so tenicity.com for the website. You can look up Tenicity on Facebook, follow them on Twitter. Are you guys on Instagram, Snapchat, anything else that I need to know about? Um, yeah, we're on Instagram and uh, uh, not on Snapchat, but it's something that uh, we can learn about, I suppose. We're on uh, Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, and, and Instagram. 
Perfect. So listeners, I hope you will check them out. Harsh, thank you again, and uh, continued success, and, and we'll have you back on in, in a couple months and hear about what's going on with Tonicity. I really want to, you know, keep sharing your story with, with my audience, and, and just personally, I like keeping up with you and, and hearing the growth of the company. So congratulations to you. To my listeners, thank you so much for tuning in. We do have a show coming next week as well, um, right before Thanksgiving, so I hope you'll check that out. The podcast of this hour will be online later today in case you'd like to share it. And uh, thanks for tuning in. See you next time on Parenting Aces. Thanks, Lisa. When you don't go to Geico.com, car insurance can be hard. Like early 90s heavy metal hard. I'm yelling and screaming and I'm loud. Roar. Geico makes it easy. You can review and update your policy or report a claim on Geico.com or the Geico mobile app. Because shouldn't we all have a little less stress in our lives? I'm not even upset about anything. At T-Mobile, we're declaring the end of data limits. Introducing T-Mobile One. One price, all unlimited, for everyone. That's right. Get unlimited 4G LTE data on your smartphone, on our network that was built to handle it. And get it at a price that won't break the bank. With four lines of unlimited LTE data for just 35 bucks a line per month with AutoPay. Switch today. Top 3% of data users greater than 26 gigabytes per month may see reduced speeds until next bill cycle. Video typically streams at 480p with qualifying credit discount via bill credit plus taxes and fees.